Today we'll be going over the first video in section 3, Maintaining React Applications. In this section, we're going to take a look at writing unit tests and type checking our code. This video is about writing unit tests for React components. We'll write the first unit test for our application. Unit testing makes it easier to maintain our code. When churn happens on our code, unit testing helps us ensure features remain working as intended and gives us insight into pieces of our code to help with any potential refactors. It can be very beneficial to write unit tests before the implementation of a module as a way to design the system. However, we already have a few components in our e-commerce project that need some unit testing. Today, we're going to test the order row component. That's the row of the table, which displays all the data associated with an order. There are many tools for unit testing React components, and it mostly comes down to personal preference. Facebook has built a library called Jest, which integrates with the Jasmine library. And there's the Karma ecosystem, which can run your test suite in multiple browsers. Today, we're going to stick with a simple and popular approach with Mocha and Expect.js. We'll install those via NPM. Notice that we're also installing Babel. We're already using Babel for ES6 translation through Babelify, a Browserify plugin. But we'd like to also write our unit tests in ES6 to keep our code base consistent. Once the install is completed, we're going to insert a test snippet into our package.json file. By default, it has an empty test command. We'll replace that with a mocha command. The command runs mocha and the Babel transpiler on all the files in the test directory of our project. I like the dot reporter, so I've chosen that, but that's just a personal preference. To get npm test to succeed, we'll quickly add an empty test file for our older row test. As expected, running npm test succeeds with no test being run. We haven't written any yet, and that's the next step. We're using expect.js here, but Mocha isn't tied to a specific assertion library. You could use true.js instead if you like, or something else. First, we'll write a test that we know are going to fail. This is a nice way to verify that our setup is correct and ensures that we don't have any false positives. We use the describe function as a way to illustrate the context of what we're testing. It can be nested indefinitely. The root describe call should describe what module we're testing. It function calls within a describe includes the actual assertions and should follow the context described in the describe calls. If there are setup code that's needed, for a specific describe block, we can use the before each function. Like my build command, I've bound a hotkey in Vim to run the test in a tmux pane below, and it shows the expected failure. Quickly fixing the test and rerunning yields a passing test suite. Now let's write the real test. We're importing order row, since that's the module we're testing. There are a few ways to render a component in our test suite. Order row is really simple so we don't need a DOM to test it. Avoiding a DOM helps to keep our test run times low, which is very important for quick feedback. React comes with a test utils add-on, and in version 13, shallow rendering was introduced. With it, we can render one level deep in our component tree and without a DOM. It's perfect for our older row component. It has a simple API where we can look at the props of the rendered component to make our assertions. While the syntax is simple, we're going to write a small wrapper around it so that we can run just one function to render our component. We'll quickly add a test helper file and a render shallow function, which we can pass our component to, to get it rendered. We're just going to need to call these three functions. With that helper done, we can use it in our order row test. We want to render on every test, so we'll put the render shallow call in the top level before each. When we run the test, it fails. We haven't passed any data to the order component, but an empty object. If we look at the order row component, we can see that it needs a little bit more data than that. We can reuse the data file that we created in the last section and copy one of the orders. The data uses moment so we'll import that too. Running that, the test passes. But of course, we haven't written any test yet. 
we've just set up our order row. I'll open the test runs in a large Tmux pane so we can see more details when the test runs. The deprecation warning we see relates to test utils. I'm running version 014 beta 1 of React, in which almost all add-ons has gotten their own package, except perf and test utils. When the final release of 014 is out, they should all be in their own packages. But until then, we'll have to live with the deprecation warning. Back to the test. We'll output the subject and see that we can access the props and children. Looking at the children, we can see that I have a type. We'll select all the TDs and get their content. This content is formatted in a way that the design specified. This is what we want to ensure it's correct, both the order of the columns as well as the formatting of the data. Once again, it's a good practice to ensure the test fails before making it pass. So we'll enter shipped as the order status and running the test to see the failure. Finally, correcting that to open yields a passing test. In this video, we installed Mocha and wrote the first unit test for our application. In the next video, we'll take a look at writing unit tests for more complex components.